Hey my friends, today we're gonna do an unboxing video. It's been a little bit, you got like five or six packages here I will unbox in front of you. But before I get started, I just got back from a six miler. So six mile walk today, not a run. But, uh, and um, packages were sitting here on the front porch. So I thought, hey, I'd share them with you. These are just some things I've purchased over this last week that I think you might find interesting. But I did want to answer, somebody ans uh, asked a question and, uh, or made a statement in one of my uh, previous videos that said, <coughs> uh, your videos are too grainy. I can't watch them. They're giving me a headache or something of that nature. So to you, my friend, I would say I have a simple solution for you. Don't watch them. But anyway, okay, so to get to an unboxing video or to the unboxing video or does that make sense? I don't even know, but okay, let's do it. First up, I don't know what this is. Feels interesting. Ah, okay. This is a dead stock World War II cargo bag. This actually holds quite a bit. So it's got the two hooks in the back, so you could put it on, I guess, put it on your uh, pistol belt. If you needed to, maybe in the back. This is not a butt pack, like uh, was popular, popularly, popularly, who, wow, which was used from the Vietnam era forward. <laughs> but uh, it's a larger cargo bag, and uh, this particular person who I purchased it from has a case of them. It's really from more the 40s through the 50s, so I guess you could say from uh, World War II through the Korean War era. But the fact that it's dead stock is really cool. I don't think it's ever been used. Yeah, it truly looks like it's dead stock. It has the U.S. on there, so more than likely it was probably more Army than uh, Marine Corps. But uh, it has a little window for you to probably put your name in there or what have you but it's also has a uh, kind of a rubberized liner in it but it's a great size it also has these two snap hooks here so I guess you can hook it up a different way or if you wore it in the back you could put your suspenders through there but anyway it's a great piece it's pretty big for a bag you would normally wear on your belt and uh, it's in fantastic condition. So that's pretty cool. Next up. Ah. This is another OG 107. Most of you know that I'm a little addicted to OG 107s. But I couldn't pass this one up. I got it for a great price. It's in great condition. And Staff Sergeant EIB, Expert Infantry Badge, Jump Master, Senior Jump Master with the wreath and the star. Jungle Warfare Patch. And an 82nd Airborne Division Patch. Pretty close to what I was wearing when I was in. So it has a lot of the same things, except uh, for the EIB, I wore a CIB because I went to combat twice. Same kind of jump, except I have a combat jump star in the middle. Been to Jungle Warfare School. I would have a Ranger tab above the 82nd Airborne Division patch. But anyway, I just thought that was kind of cool. It kind of matches. Uh, I was a staff sergeant at one time. But anyway. There you go, OG-107. Anything that's 82nd Airborne Division, infantry, soldier, ranger related, that's something I really gravitate towards. Just because of my own experience. 
and I feel like, uh, you know, that's prior to the OG 507, so it has to be before 1975, so it's a uh, Type 3 with the button sleeve OG 107s, so somewhere between 1965 and 1975, so I think that makes it a pretty cool piece. Anyway... These are probably a couple photos. I collect original photography, and I gravitate towards military-related, obviously, and sports-related. And I think uh, the larger the photo, the better, but obviously it has to be original, not reproductions or what have you. And when I get them, I have them professionally framed and matted. And they look great on the wall. And I think if you could get them for a good price, depending on the subject matter, I think they're a great investment. They look great on the wall, that's for sure. But, uh, like I said, if you get it for a decent price, and you put it in, and of course, professionally framing something can cost quite a bit of money. Framing is so ridiculously expensive. But if it, if you could get a uh, pre-made frame that fits it and looks nice, I think you have something that's pretty special. And you could actually turn around and resell it. I don't resell any of mine because I just like them too much. I have so many, I don't even have room on my walls uh, in my office here anymore. And I think I'm going to have to start selling some of them off. But this is uh, World War I. It's just a fantastic image. It's the right size. I like the folder that it's in. This is the same person. So those are pretty special. And I really gravitate towards Spanish-American War and World War I and then sports photos from like the 1900s, usually basketball or football more than anything. But uh, boxing, I think, is pretty interesting. And let's see. I have another one. Okay, there's those two. Oh, right here in front of me. This is a football player, turn of the century, the last century, not this past, but the one prior, 20th century. This is the same person. Here he is in his nice suit, and this is his uh, football uniform. These are just fantastic, and they will look really, really good framed. I'll show you an example of part of my collection of, of something that I've had framed. So I'll be right back. These are a couple that I'll show you. This is a uh, of a basketball, a couple basketball players. I think on the back of the photo, it's it's uh, dated around 1918. And this is one of my favorites. This is of a, a whole basketball team, and this is 1933-34 college champs, or maybe that's high school. Maybe a uh, maybe a high school team. They look a little young. But I just think these photos are fantastic. And if you ever wanted to flip them to do, if you get them at a good price, uh, I think I 
originally paid maybe about $25 for this photo without the frame. I picked the frame up at a thrift store, so that's a good place to source them. Uh, and then uh, put it in, and I think uh, uh, potentially it could probably sell for around 100 bucks. And I've seen them go for that quite a bit. And they look really, really nice on display. Last thing I want to show you, and I'll probably need a knife for this one, so let me step off the screen for a moment. I'm always looking when I'm out and about sourcing in antique malls and flea markets and flea market outside flea markets are always my favorite and uh, vintage shops and thrift stores state sales and then online I'm always looking for really nice vintage totes, tote bags. Well, this is a company online that takes original duffel bags. In this case, it's a World War II duffel bag, and they turn it into a tote. So this is an original World War II duffel bag. Still got some of the number on it. I think it looks fantastic, that nice worn patina. And they use high grade uh, leather for the handle and on the bottom. And uh, they put a nice liner on the, in the inside. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, now I paid up for this. I wouldn't normally pay that much for a duffel bag. I mean, I paid 150, but uh, this is for my personal and for going out in, uh, sourcing it's a nice sourcing bag or when i go shopping so for for travel but I, I like this a lot i think it's a pretty cool looking bag and uh, i def i would not pay that much normally for something i was going to flip but obviously i'd pay that much because i did <laughs> for something i'm going to keep and use for myself and i really dig this bag i think it's pretty cool well that is all for today and we'll see you next time and I'll bring you some more really cool military stuff. See you later.